My guest today is Meredith Lake, an ABC presenter. She's recognised in the, the world as an historian, an author, academic and commentator. Welcome, Meredith. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. You, you've written a, a number of books, uh, hosted a radio programme, done television <laughs> work. So was, was media, or whatever media represents, was that on the agenda from the beginning? Oh, agenda's a really strong word. It makes it sound like it was all planned out when you put it like that. But no, not at all. Working in radio now is a complete surprise, a complete change of gear, really, for me in my life. So how did it come about? Well, if we wind back the clock, maybe two years, mm -hmm. I just had a baby, my third one. My most recent book had just been launched and I thought I was at the end of a road, yes. not the beginning of one. Mm -hmm. um, I'd spent four years writing that book, telling the story of the Bible in Australia and all the things that Australians have thought about that very complex and engaging text. And I really thought, I didn't know what was next. I was gonna spend time with my baby, which I did. Mm -hmm. But in the mix of all the interviews and conversations that the book enabled me to have, the ABC came knocking at my door and said, hey, there's a, one of our religion shows needs a new presenter. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'd realized that that was my dream job. But as soon as someone said that, I was like, oh, gee, I hope they choose me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just delighted to be able to host Soul Search. So did writing that book kind of contribute to, to this journey that led to there in your mind? I don't mean by the actual invitation, but did it yeah. kind of open up ways of thinking about life and, and people? I see the show as an extension of the conversation that yeah. I was interested yeah. in with the book. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because what I've always been interested in as a person, as a Christian, but certainly as a historian, is how the people around me in this place that we call Australia make sense of faith, make sense of meaning. How do we join the dots and navigate the challenge of life? Mm. And for the last 250 years or so, a lot of people have done that mm. in dialogue with the church, with mm. the Bible, with mm. the Christian story. Mm. And so I wanted to lean into that and listen into that and mm. see how people have gone with that. Mm. And that's largely what the book's about. There's skeptics, you know, believers, all kinds of people, activists, mm. writers, politicians, they're all there. Mm. And the show in some ways is about broadening that out even further people from Christian traditions, but other traditions as well. What sort of things do you talk about on the show? Well, it's about... It's a good advert, you realise yeah, that, Yeah, sure, you? <laughs> yeah. I love to talk about it because it's so interesting to me. It's about what people's spirituality, their faith, their religion actually looks like in mm. their life. Mm. How do they navigate the crisis of a pandemic? Mm -hmm. How do they make meaning when someone close to them dies? Mm -hmm. How do they look after their children? How do they join the dots mm. as they move through life? Mm. Uh, so we have all kinds of people on. Sometimes they're very famous. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, I think we had the Archbishop of Canterbury mm. uh, <laughs> once, mm. probably the most famous person we've had. Uh, but normally it's people that you might not have heard of, but sure. who have a fascinating story, who are very thoughtful about their faith and able to talk about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So what do you consider yourself to be? Media <laughs> personality <laughs> or off the program, academic? historian, or a combination of all those things? Well, a combination, but I think the big themes for me are storytelling. Yes. I love to, but first, to be a storyteller, you need to be a listener. Yeah. And that might mean listening to the person sitting across from you, like we are now, mm. or it might mean listening to the voice of someone in the archives as a historian who wrote that letter that you're reading 200 years later. Yes. But it is still about listening and trying to pay attention to how someone else saw the world and, and, and work from there. So of all the disciplines necessary to do the work you do, listening is, is paramount and, and for you the most important, really. I think it's for life, not just for work. Um, and it's a way of being a neighbour to the people around us before we speak to, to listen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I mean, for, for us at Wesley Mission, listening to the voices of those who are struggling is mm. part of our journey. And I'm sure that's the sort of thing you hear in, in conversations with people. I think listening can be very radical, especially if you do. Yeah. It's a kind of hospitality, I mm -hmm. think, a way mm -hmm. of saying you matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be anything, but you have a story to tell and I'm here to listen to you. It's a, a kind of solidarity. It's mm -hmm. a kind of hospitality. There's an implicit generosity in listening. So for me, it's an ethic as well as a practice, and I'd love to be better at it and really my job. So as a, yeah. as on a Christian program, I want to ask you what I often ask people, guess, what part does the Christian faith play in your life? It's formative. I mean, I grew up with parents who 
helped me understand that God loved me from mm. a very early age. For mm. them, it wasn't about signing up to a certain set of ideas or conforming to a social convention. It was about a living relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that was the, I guess, the world that produced me. Mm -hmm. I think as you move through life and deal with all kinds of things, we have to reassess constantly mm. what would it look like mm. to understand God's love in this situation. Mm. Is that hard? Is that easy? How does it work? And so I think I'm on that path like many people are. Um, it's, not, it's not about having it all stitched up, but about trusting that at the end of the day, you're not on your own. Before we finish, I want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, the Christian perspective can seem somewhat marginalised in many people's understanding. How important do you think it is for, for Christians to be um, keeping a voice somehow in the public sphere? Well, I think there's that line in the New Testament about giving an account of the hope that we have. And I think sometimes Christians can use their voices in ways that aren't hopeful, that can be constraining for other people that maybe don't go down so well. But there is a way of Christians speaking a word of hope, a word of love. Mm -hmm. And I think those voices are always things that are useful to our neighbours, uh, helpful for our society. And when we speak in a way that serves the common good, that's about serving, not putting the spotlight mm -hmm. on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of voice does have something to offer a nation that I think needs to make space for all its citizens. And to use Lewis as not surprised by joy, but we can be surprised by hope too, can't we? Sure. As people here are speaking hopeful words in the world. Let me, let me ask, if somebody was thinking about, they want, they're a Christian person and they want to be involved in communication in some way, what could you say to them um, that might be helpful? Well, I've thought about this a lot because I think it's actually about being in the world rather than speaking in the first instance. And I think what I was saying earlier about listening is actually the beginning, um, not to be the one who speaks, but to listen. It's the two ears, one mouth principle, I think. Mm -hmm. My own path has been surprising to me, not least. I'm not sure where it will lead or what kind of conversations I'll be able to have in the future. But I think... Uh, being attentive to other people, genuinely interested in them, not for what we might get out of them or what they might be able to give us, but for the sake of recognising that they too are made in the image of God, mm -hmm. they're valuable, their story matters. That that's the beginning, I think, of being someone who moves through the world in a Christian way. And it's been lovely to talk to you and to recognise that, that importance of listening. And the concept of, of, of listening as, as souls and individuals in the world is important, isn't it? And it's been lovely to talk to you, Meredith.